What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So you might have heard that Lumen was just added to the preview version of Twin Motion. I wanted to talk about why this is a big deal for your lighting in Twin Motion. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just real quick, if you are interested in learning more about how to create realistic renderings in Twin Motion, you can check out my Twin Motion Essentials course. This is an in-depth start to finish course where I teach you exactly how to use Twin Motion to create realistic renderings. We talk about everything from materials to lighting. We set up example scenes. So we really kind of dive deep in how exactly you should be using Twin Motion in order to make your renderings more realistic. So you can get the Twin Motion Essentials course either standalone or as a bundle with the SketchUp Essentials course where you can learn how to model in SketchUp as well by checking out the renderingessentials.com slash Twin Motion course. So note that Twin Motion has added some global illumination documentation to their documentation page. So if you want more in-depth information on um, exactly how this works, as well as what's supported, what isn't, um, and kind of some more in-depth information about some of the limitations of Lumen, you can check those out in the documentation, which I will link to in the notes down below. Note that I believe that you're going to need an RTX card in order for this to work. I'm not 100% sure, but that is my current understanding. But let's jump over into Twin Motion and take a look at this. So this is a SketchUp model that I've imported into Twin Motion. I've set up a few of the materials. I haven't done a ton with them um, or anything like that. This is, I've also replaced a couple models, but I've not done a ton of work setting this model up. And so this is what the model looks like with just kind of the standard lighting in the scene, right? You fly around, um, we've got our lighting coming from an HDRI background right here. You do get some shadows and some other things like that in here. And so let's say we were to fly over into the kitchen right here. The kitchen has a tile backsplash and it's also got um, appliances, other things like that. And it looks fine, but it doesn't look fantastic, right? Well, previously what we would have to do in order to get the better results, right, of the light bouncing off of things like the shiny tiles, what we would have to do is we would have to go into path trace mode. So if we click on the path tracer, notice what that's gonna do is that is going to go through and it's going to calculate that, but it's definitely not in real time. Right, if I fly around, it's just re-rendering over and over again. It does look pretty good, but it's very slow. Now, what we have instead is if we want to, and we're gonna to toggle that back off, we can go into our ambiance settings over here in our scene. So click on ambiance, and then you wanna go, not in the environment tab, but in the render tab, you wanna scroll down to global illumination. You wanna click on the option for lumen. So when we do this, notice how this makes a massive difference in the way the light is bouncing off of the tiles here or the way the light is bouncing off of the glass right here, right? So standard, you just get this kind of like weird reflection that doesn't show anything in the background. Lumen is actually going to show you the light bounces so you can actually see what's behind you. And so you can see that this is a massive difference in the kind of lighting that's going on in your scene and you're able to see it in real time, right? This is a massive, massive deal. And so if you go in and, and the lighting is going to update in real time when you adjust your lighting sources, right? So if I come in here and I adjust my HDRI image right here, notice how the reflections and the shadows are adjusting in here as well. Not only on this surface, but also on surfaces like this glass right here. So as I rotate, notice how I'm actually getting real-time reflections updating in this scene. And so this is a massive deal for a couple different reasons. So first off, I will say it's not going to 100% replace the path tracing. So the path tracing gives you, in my opinion, and this is probably a bad angle, so let's fly over a little bit closer right here. And so the path trace mode is definitely going to give you like softer reflections that look a little bit better. So it is different from that standpoint. Um, so it is going to calculate those to a higher level of detail, but being able to use Lumen like this is just fast. And what that means is we're going to start getting the light bounces off of our materials and they're going to look a lot better and that's going to adjust in real time. That gets really interesting when you get into materials and you start messing around with like the normal, right? And see how much that can affect this. Um, but you, you actually get a really realistic picture of what these materials are going to look like in real time. So one of the things that this does is it makes scenes possible that either weren't possible before or would have taken a long time to render. So let's say we jump over into the garage, 
that we have right here. And what I've done is I've set up a translator over here that's basically translating the garage door up. Well, notice how the lighting in this scene is going to adjust based on where these are, and I'm actually getting real-time reflections and changes off of this object. Now, where that is a massive benefit is when it comes to like rendering, um, when it comes to rendering animations. So previously, if I wanted to do something like this, it would take forever, right? It would take a massive amount of time because you had to render out every single frame of a path traced animation. And so I'll just give you a quick example. Say I wanted to create an animation right here, and I'm just going to set it where I've got a 10 second animation like this. But if I take this and I render it out, so I'm just gonna go to my export right here. We're going to select the video, which is gonna be this one right here. And we're going to export it. So we'll go ahead and so we'll go ahead, we'll select that folder and then we'll export it out. And so if we look at this, notice how we get this video where all of the reflections are showing up properly in here and it happened really quickly right so um at 30 frames per second that would have been 300 frames say roughly that they took 30 seconds a frame which i think is very fast um, that could have taken an hour and a half to render in path trace mode where right here i was able to render it just like that and so I guess I didn't really do a very good job of giving you a reference. If this wasn't on Lumen, this is what that scene looks like. So the light does come in, but nothing else really happens. So you get a little bit of reflection off of the car paint right here, but it's not very pronounced. Or if you jump over into Lumen and then take a look at what this does, you can see how this just gives you a significantly better result um, with the way that the light reflects and the way that it's coming into your scene. It's just, there's no comparison between doing this without Lumen and with Lumen. So this also makes a massive difference in the way that emissive light works, right? So this is what the scene looks like if I just go into the standard real-time mode. Now you could jump over into path trace mode, but again, you've got the same issue, right? It's gotta like re-render every time you do this. Well, if we jump over into Lumen, notice how it's going to give you a very similar result, right? And this lighting is going to update in real time in your scene. So notice how the light that's being cast on the walls is the same color as this emissive light right here, right? So if I change the color, my scene, and go ahead and adjust this around, right? Notice how the lighting that's being cast by this object is adjusting as well. So lighting things using emissive light now is going to actually help you light the scene where before um, in the real time mode, it just didn't really do all that much. It didn't really give you an idea of the result. So emissive lighting is gonna be significantly better using Lumen than it was before. And th so one thing to note is they're saying they are having some issues with uh, mirror materials rendering in the scenes. Um, so they're just saying don't use objects with mirror materials as a focal point. Um, some lighting is going to bounce and you can get kind of that mirror effect, but it's probably one of those things at the moment that's best left in the background. So that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Lumen and about Twin Motion. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to learn more about how to use Twin Motion, you can check out my course at the renderingessentials.com slash twin motion course. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.